What is up guys? This is the fourth part of the series on navigation in ROS2. This is also where we start doing something from almost scratch. So we create a project and the project's aim is to make a patrolling robot. We'll have a world, we'll have a turtle bot, of course all of this is in gazebo. And then this robot is supposed to patrol an area using four points. We can have n number of points, but in this example project, we will have four points and the robot will keep moving from one point to the other and then just keep on doing this again and again. This is a rather simple example where we use our existing gazebo setup, which was our turtle bot simulation, and then use existing nav2 package. And we create our own application layer where using a behavior tree in C++, we ask the navigation package to actually move the robot wherever we want. In this case, there are four such points. Now, before I start talking about all of this, some credits are in order. The first one is for David F. Conte, who owns behaviortree.cpp. He is the open source contributor and the open source uh, creator of uh, behaviortree.cpp library. The second one is Sebastian Castro. When I was figuring all of this out, I looked at his nav2 turtlebot3 repo for Humble, and I reverse engineered and figured all of this out to build this example. So shout out to the both of them. Now let's start with the example. Let's first visualize what we've done in the previous video. This is what we actually did in the previous video. We had three components in our system. The first one is TurtleBot 3 simulation in Gazebo where a world along with our TurtleBot is spawned. The second one is our navigation to package. This navigation to package is from nav to bring up. This is of course the nav to package we are trying to use. And the third one is Arvis GUI. If you remember what we did in the previous video, we started with TB3 simulation in gazebo. So that was the first component. And then we started nav2, which was supposed to give navigation instructions to the robot. And the third part was launching Arvis GUI from where we did two things. One, give initial AMCL post to AMCL, which was a part of your nav to bring up. And second, also give uh, commands for navigation to ask the robot to move to some certain position, right? Now, we change this to the following in this video. We would still have TurtleBot 3 with the world in simulation in Gazebo, of course. The second part is still Nav2, but the third part is not Arvis GUI anymore, but our own application code. In our application code, and in this case, we'll create a new package for this, uh, we are supposed to ask Navigation 2 to move the robot to certain positions. So instead of using our Arvis GUI, we do it from code. In our application code package, we will use behavior trees. We will create a simple behavior tree where each leaf node would correspond to one position of the robot from four. So we'll have four different positions in the world. This is a very simple example, but this will help you understand how to create a behavior tree in C++ and use it to interact with navigation too. Now, please bear in mind that this example does not change the behavior tree inside navigation to package. As I've told you in part two of the series, you can of course do that. And that is a great flexibility from navigation too, but we are not supposed to cover that in this video. So we will create an external behavior tree. The word external is super important because as I said before, we are not changing the internal behavior tree of nav2. So we create an external behavior tree which interacts with navigation2 package using uh, navigate to pose again and again. So for the first component where you're supposed to set up the world plus total bot robot in gazebo, we actually have everything. But instead of using the existing launch file, which we used in the previous video to launch the world with the robot, we will actually create our own launch file. That is not necessary, but I'd like to do that because making a new launch file just helps us understand how launch files are set up, right? So we'll create a new launch file for the first component, which is your gazebo simulation setup. The second one is nav2. We will create a new launch file for this as well. In the previous video, we were using one terminal to launch uh, navigation to another terminal for Arvis. And then of course, in Arvis, we would use AMCL to set the initial pose, right? Let's do all of this from one launch file itself so that we don't need multiple terminals. We will just need two terminals to set up all of this, which is your gazebo simulation plus nav2, which I would call the infrastructure. One launch file for simulation setup, one launch file for nav2 plus Arvis plus uh, AMCL uh, initial pose setup. And this infrastructure, so to speak, would be one ROS2 package. That is the one we are creating now. Let's call this package TB3SIM. The last component is, as I said, the application code where we'll create a new package and inside it, we'll use behaviortree.cpp to control the robot using a behavior tree. Let's call this package TB3 underscore autonomy. So we need to create two packages for this entire example. This video will cover creating the first package and the next video will cover creating the second package. So the first package is about your simulation setup plus nav2 setup. Let's do all of this now. To do this, let's start from scratch where we create our new ROS2 workspace. Please make sure you follow this series and especially the previous video for everything to work here. To create a workspace, this is what you do right now. I hope you know this already. If not, I have an entire series on ROS2 basics, so you can check all of that out. Let's go to the workspace. 
Here, like the previous video, we need to get all the right TurtleBot 3 packages for Humble. I'm using Humble, so Humble in my case, but if you're using Galactic or some other version of Floss 2, you have to use the right versions for TurtleBot 3 packages. I'm sure you know the drill already to get all the right TurtleBot 3 packages, but I'll show you how to do it anyhow. This is my repo where you can get all the code we are using in this video and in the next video as well. In this repo, go to TurtleBot3.repos, copy all of this, this is for Humble, and then now we'll use VCS tool. Let's create this file first. Okay. Now let's use VCS tool. We've done this before, so I know you know this already. If not, please check out the previous video. So we have all the TotalBot 3 packages needed for our simulation to run. Let's do callcon build once. I'm mentioning this once, but it is a given that any terminal I'm using has ROS2 sourced. To source ROS2, this is what you do. I already have this in my bash script, so I don't need to do it again and again for other terminals. Now I'm building all the packages we got from VCS tool. Okay, so all 16 packages are built. Now, as I said, we'll create a new package which will be responsible for launching your simulation setup plus nav2 setup. So let's create a new package called tb3sim. Go to src. This is how you create a new package. We will create a Python package right now because we will only have one Python script for AMCL initial uh, position setup. In the next video, where we'll create an autonomy package for creating a behavior tree and giving all the navigation poses to uh, nav2, we will use a C++ package. So we have our new package ready. Let's now use VS Code to code in Python and set up whatever we need. I'll go to workspace. So this is your VS Code where you have your SRC directory. Here you have TotalBot3 and utils. That is something you got when you actually use the VCS tool to get your right TotalBot3 packages. TB3SIM is the one we created right now. So this is our own package. Let's create the first component in our example, which is setting up your simulation in Gazebo. For that, we don't need to code anything. All we want to do is use a launch file. So we'll create a launch file right now to run your uh, simulation, which will include your world in Gazebo and also include your uh, robot in Gazebo. As I said before, remember that creating this launch file is an exercise for us right now. We already have a launch file in our TotalBot3 packages, which is something we got from VCS tool. So this launch file is slightly redundant, but we're doing it just to learn. Let's create a new directory called launch. Inside launch, we'll create a launch file for setting up your simulation. Let's call it TotalBot3 underscore world. It'll be dot launch dot by. Okay, in this file, let's import everything we need. These are all the imports you need. You need OS to get all the right file path. You need get package share directory to get the directory path for all the packages you need. Uh, you need launch description. You need include launch description to use other launch files. You need Python launch description source in tandem with include launch description. You need launch configuration to give any configuration values to other launch files. If you're not sure about how launch files are set up, please look at my video on launch files in ROS2. So assuming that you know the basic idea behind launch files and how they are set up, I'll go forward with this. You need your generate launch description function. You need TB3 gazebo launch file directory because that is something we'll use to launch a robot state publisher later. You also need package gazebo ROS because you need to get the path of the package gazebo ROS, which is our basis for uh, spinning up everything we need in gazebo. These are the three configuration values we need when we're using gazebo along with uh, the robot. X, Y pose are basically position values where we want the robot to begin. And use sim time is just to say that you're using simulation time that is set to true. This is the path of your world you want to use in your simulation. To run gazebo, you need to set up your server and client in gazebo. So these are your servers and clients. We are of course using package gazebo ROS, which is something we got from VCS tool. And once you build all of that, whenever you use get package share directory with gazebo ROS, which is something we do on line 11, you will get the right path for this package. So what we got using VCS tool is the basis on which we are making this launch file, right? I hope you understand that the content of this launch file is a way for us to trigger what's there in your uh, other package, which is in this case, uh, TurtleBot3. Inside TurtleBot3, you will have Gazebo ROS. So that is how things are set up. And as I said, this launch file is just a way for us to trigger what is already there in TurtleBot3. Now, if you want to use a robot, you also need robot state publisher. So this is how you do it. It is inside TB3 Gazebo launch file directory, which is TurtleBot3 Gazebo inside this TurtleBot. And you can do that using your robot state publisher launch.py inside that. 
The last one we need here is the command for spawning your turtle bot. You can spin up your entire world without this, but without the robot, it makes no sense, right? So this is how you spin up your turtle bot robot. The initial values are given as expose and y pose, which is set to minus two and minus 0.5 in the world. You can change this if you want the robot to start at a different position. Once you're done with this, you need to generate your launch description. So this is what you need. I've added all the commands we just made here. So this is the command to get your uh, gazebo server. This is for the gazebo client. This is for robot state publisher. And this is to spawn your total bot. Now we just return this. Launch description is returned. So we actually have this uh, launch file ready. When we use this launch file, we will be able to spin up our gazebo world along with our total bot three robot. But when you create a launch file, it won't be visible if you don't change your uh, setup.py. In setup.py, you need to add this. This says that you have your launch directory with all the launch files. So all the launch files should move to your shared directory. And this is the path which will actually be used when you're actually running the system. So once this is done, when we build our workspace, we will be able to launch your gazebo simulation with the robot inside the world. But let's not do that yet. Let's also create the other component of this package, which is your nav2 component. As I said before, this component is responsible for launching your nav2 infrastructure, launching Arvis and giving the initial post to AMCL. The first two things can be done in the launch file itself because that is all about launching. The third part needs a ROS2 node because from ROS2 node, we need to publish the initial values of the robot or the initial pose of the robot to a specific topic. AMCL subscribes to that topic to get the initial values. So we need to create a new node. And if you've seen my previous videos, you know how to create a new Python node in ROS2, right? But let's do that right now. To create a new node, which will be responsible to give the initial position of the robot to AMCL, we will create a new file in TB3SIM. Let's call it set init AMCL post.py. These are all the imports you need. You know why we need the first two. The next one, which says pose with covariance stamped, is for us to actually make a publisher. And we'll publish on a specific topic I was talking about. That topic is called initial pose. This topic needs pose with covariance stamped message type. We'll use time for something trivial. I'll show you why we need it. We need transforms 3D because we will transform from uh, Euler to Quaternion. One thing to note is that if you do not have transforms 3D Python package, please install that using pip. So pip install transforms 3D. Let's start creating our node now. This is your node. Let's make the init method. Since we are inheriting from node, this is what we need to do. Now I said we need a publisher for the topic initial pose. So this is your publisher. Now before we continue making a node, let's also make our main function. We need to initialize your context for us and then you create an object for this publisher. You spin this and that's how any node works. And for shutdown, we do this. I'm sure you know about this already. If not, please check out my series on basic ROS2. Now this node right now is not doing anything. It just has a publisher, but there is nothing else at all, right? So let's also start creating functionality here. We want to publish the initial position of the robot on this topic initial pose. But the first thing we want to do is we want to wait for someone to subscribe to this. Well, AMCL will subscribe to this, but we don't want to publish before someone subscribes to it. In this case, AMCL. So I've added this as a part of your init method. In ROS2, you can check the subscriber count for any topic. So if you have a publisher, you can use get subscription count. While the subscription count is zero, we will wait here because we don't want to publish anything before AMCL subscribes to this topic. Once this is done, your object will be created. The main functionality of this should now be to publish everything. So let's create a method for publishing. Let's call this method send init pose. We can use ROS2 parameters to give the initial pose of the robot externally. So in that case, we'll have ROS2 parameters like this. If you don't know about parameters, again, check out my series on uh, basic ROS2. Here we have four parameters, X, Y, theta and covariance, where the default values are zero, zero, zero. And this is the default value for uh, your covariance. Honestly, I haven't tuned this value at all. I just saw someone using it and I am just using that as well. If you have more idea about the covariance value, please tell me about it in the comments below. Now in your initial pose, you need the robots position, right? So this is how you do it. You'll get your X value y value theta and covariance as a ROS2 parameter. If we pass these values in from the launch file we'll make later, we'll get these values here. If not, we will have these default values. Now we need to create a message and publish it. This is your message and we want to populate this now. This has one, your frame ID, which says that x, y and theta are with respect to this frame, which is map. 
The next one is position where you'll have your X value and then your Y value in the third one. Now we need to set orientation. Orientation for this uh, message, which is post covariance with stamp is done using quaternion. Right now we have this value theta. We have to convert it to quaternion. So this is how you do it. You have X, Y value zero, zero, and then theta, which is the only thing we used for quaternion, right? And this is the straightforward way to set up your W, X, Y, Z. This is just a mathematical concept. You can look up on the internet about quaternion or Euler to quaternion transformation, and you'll get these equations. Now, the last thing we need is covariance because this says pose with covariance. This is how you set up your covariance matrix. Again, this value, which is 0.5 raised to the power two is something I saw someone doing and I am using that too. Please tell me if you know why. Now we have a message ready so we can publish it. Okay, so we have a method which is supposed to publish this value, this initial pose of the robot we get from the launch file. So as a ROS2 parameter, but how do we use it? This is all you need to do. You, you just need to call send init pose once your object is created. So you know to give initial pose to AMCL is created, but we still have to change our setup.py file, right? Whenever you create a new node, you need to add it here in the console scripts list. Okay, so inside your package, you have set initial AMCL pose and inside that main, which is the trigger point. So we are done with our node. Now we can create a second and final launch file for this package, which does three things as I said before. One, uh, bring up nav2, second, uh, launch Arvis, third, launch this node, which is supposed to give initial AMCL value. So we don't need to use Arvis to manually do it anymore. Let's create a new launch file then. Inside your launch directory, let's name it nav2 nav2.launch.py. Here, like the other launch file, we need the same kind of imports. We added node as an import because this is one we need when we actually uh, use the node we just created right now and also use the node for always. So it's the same process. We make generate launch description. We need these two package paths. One is for nav2 and one is for tb3sim, which is the package we are in right now. I'll tell you why we need this in a bit. So the first thing was launching nav2. This is how you launch nav2 it'll use bring up underscore launch.py. This is something we used specifically in the previous video using the command line, but because we want to do everything and not just have your bring up launch in one terminal and then another terminal for our ways, then do AMCL manually. We'll do everything in this launch file itself. So one terminal and all these three things are done. If you see launch arguments, you have use sim time, you have auto start. That is something we need to add here. And also you need to have map. So bring up launch for nav2 needs all of this. So let's add your configuration. So you have these two. What about the third one, map? We need to have a map. In the previous video, we created a map using slam toolbox and saved it, right? We will use that map here. So we need to create a new directory with maps. In tb 3 sim, let's create a new directory called maps. And I already have the results from the previous video saved. So I have map.yaml and map.pgm. I will just paste it here right now. Okay, so I have pasted map.pgm and map.yaml here. If you don't have these files, you can download them from my repo, from my GitHub repo. I've added the link in the description. That repo is actually what we are building right now. So whatever you see in this video and in the next video, it is a part of that repo itself. So you can look at that repo even for the code. So we have a map ready, map.yaml inside your map directory inside a total bot C simulation package. Okay, now the second thing was launching always, right? This is how you do it. If you remember in the previous video, when we were launching always from a terminal, we used this node for always two. And also we used a specific configuration which launched your always with everything you need. You don't have to add all the elements specifically, right? This was exactly what we added in the terminal. So you see nav to default view dot always. So we'll see everything in always without us adding different elements. The last part is setting your initial AMCL pose for which we just created a node. We created it inside tb3 sim. The executable was amcl init post publisher that was in setup.py. The name was this, and then the parameters are the initial values. These are the values we also used in the other launch file, right? So x pose and y pose. There is of course a better way to do it where you will get this x, y value from one source. Uh, but right now we have two different places. One is this and the other one is this, where we have minus two and minus 0.5. Um, this is just an example, so I'm not optimizing for that, but for a proper project, you should always have one source of truth. So we're done with these three things for this launch file. Now we need to set up your launch description and you know this already. This is how we do it. Let's return your launch description. now.
Okay, so we are done with our launch file. So in fact, I think we are done with everything for this package. This package is responsible for setting up your simulation in Gazebo with the world and the robot that was using the first launch file we created, turtlebot 3 underscore world dot launch dot pi. Then the second part was the second element in our project, which is setting up your nav2, launching always, setting your initial AMCL post. So both of these uh, elements are done from our end. Let's now run the system. Are we missing anything? We have used maps here, but this again won't be visible when the code base is built, when your workspace is built. We have to make this visible using setup.py again, like we did for uh, our Python launch files. We also have to do it for your map directory. So this is what we add. This says that you have a directory called maps and everything inside that should go to this part, which is share package name and inside map directory, you have to put all of that. So your maps directory effectively becomes a part of your uh, package subdirectory inside share. So at this point, I think we're ready with everything. Let's build to see if we have missed something. Let's do call con build from here. This says something is missing. Let's see what is wrong. Ah, okay, so we have not imported something here. Of course, if we are using OS here and glob here, we need to import them. Okay, so 17 packages, we had 16 before, now one more package, 17 packages, everything is done. Um, I think we are ready to launch our simulation setup along with your nav2 setup. So this entire infrastructure in one package. We'll need two terminals for these two launch files, right? The first launch file is turtlebot3 underscore world dot launch dot pi. So let's first source your workspace. Now to launch your gazebo simulation, since you're using turtlebot3, you also need to export your turtlebot3 model. We have done this in the previous video as well. So if you don't know about it, please look at it. This is how you export your gazebo model path. You choose your turtlebot3 model. Okay, now at this point, I think we can use our turtlebot3 underscore world dot launch dot pi to set up your simulation. Your package name and see both the launch files are visible nav2.launch.py and turtlebot3 underscore world.launch.py. So let's first launch turtlebot3. Okay, so you see you have your robot ready. Now let's use our second launch file to set up your nav2 infrastructure. Let's source our workspace again. Remember that I have already sourced ROS2, it's in my bash script. Now let's launch our nav2. Okay, let's see if this works. So if you see this works in my other window, I have this. So instead of having so many terminals where in one terminal, you launch your gazebo simulation in another one nav2, then another one for arvis. And then once arvis is launched, you use 2d post estimate to give the initial post. We've done everything using two launch files in two terminals. Of course, you can say that you can do all of this in one launch file. That is your choice. And in a proper project, there are so many considerations to decide if you need one launch file or two launch files or three launch files. But anyway, this is an example. So we have two launch files. Now, the next part is controlling the robot using a new package, which will be the application layer, so to speak. So we are left with the third part of the system, which will be TB3 underscore autonomy. That is where we'll create a new package, which decides where the robot should actually go. In this case, we will just create a behavior tree with four nodes and each node will be responsible for sending the robot to a different location. So we'll have four locations and the robot will keep moving from one location to the other, then third one, fourth one, then the first one again. But this is a simple example. Think of it this way. If you have your application package set up, then what you will do is you will use that package with all the intelligence you have. It could include a variety of things, computer vision, whatever you want. But based on that, you can decide where the robot should go. And Nav2's responsibility is to execute on that. So the application side is completely yours to make and you can do whatever you want there. And then the other two parts of the system, namely Nav2 and TB3SIM are just the infrastructure for you 
to execute on the commands you want using all the computations you are doing on your system. Nav2 will still be there for a real robot, of course, as a package here. But when you look at TB3 Sim, what you're actually looking at is just the simulation. In case of a real robot, this will exactly be replaced by your robot hardware along with the ROS package running on your robot. So you might have a robot which already has any open source ROS2 package. So you will just run the ROS2 package on that robot and everything which this simulation is exposing to you or specifically to NAV2, it will be exposed by that package itself. So think of your simulation component of the system as something plug and play where you can remove it and put the real robot there itself. And as long as you either have any open source ROS2 set of packages for exposing everything like the simulation is doing, uh, your NAV2 will work, your application code or your package which you'll create in the next video will work. But if you don't have any open source uh, set of packages for your robot, then you might have to end up creating all of that, right? So that is something which depends on the project, depends on what you want to do. If you're doing a hobby project using any existing uh, robot like Ray by uh, uh, Lixonis guys, or let's say TotalBot 3, like the hardware TotalBot 3, or maybe you're working for a project in a company, there you possibly will have everything custom. So there you'll have your hardware robot with a very custom module and expose everything this simulation is exposing. So my point is, as long as you have the simulation like this or real robot, the first part of this system, which is something I'm highlighting right now, stays as it is with respect to the interaction between uh, NAV2 and uh, the application layer, right? So the other two parts of the system remain as they are. That's why this simulation example is still important for you to understand how to interact using NAV2 and how to interact with NAV2. Now, I hope this video served as an example for you to set up your NAV2 infrastructure and also uh, trivial, but set up your uh, TotalBot 3 simulation. The next video is actually the main one where we'll code from scratch to build a behavior tree in C++. That package will also be in C++ and we'll interact with NAV2 using navigate to pose uh, action. So I'll see you in the next video. Please tell me how you like this video. Thank you. Bye-bye.